if you want to accomplish anything, which means to become an extraordinary level of consciousness person, you must first expect it of yourself. You must see yourself and be unafraid to say to yourself, I am connected at always, at all times, to my source, to the divine mind, to the Tao, to God, to that which is the creator of all. I am a part of it. And the first of these five foundations I call imagination. Imagination. Many of our greatest thinkers have spoken about the power of imagination. William Blake said that what is now proved was once only imagined. Now think about the importance of that. If you want to have something show up in your life, the kind of person you would like to become, manifest something new into your life, something powerful, whatever it might be, you obviously must first be able to imagine it. Your imagination. This is yours and yours alone. You can place anything into your imagination that you want to place there. Independent of what anybody else says about it, independent of what your senses tell you, independent of all the evidence that may be to the contrary, you can place into your imagination an I am that represents what you would like to attract into your life and make it come into fruition. Einstein's most famous quote, one of his most famous observations, he said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Placing these I am's into your imagination, I had a, some of you I'm sure know about it because it's been all over the papers and so on, a diagnosis of leukemia a couple of years ago. And for a while, I kind of began to believe some of the things that were being told to me about what happens when you have this particular kind of, of leukemia. And I have instead, in the last year or so, had some of the most amazing, astonishing things happen into my life, where I have felt just so, I was just so alive and so strengthened and so fully connected to my source. I have never felt so powerful as I have the last several years since I recognized the power that I have in my imagination to place something there and live from it. Einstein once said, if you want your children to be intelligent, read them fairy tales. If you want your children to be more intelligent, read them more fairy tales. <laughs> It's one of the reasons I've taken to writing children's books, to give children an opportunity to explore that thing called their imagination from the time that they're just little boys and little girls. And what I have in my imagination is a do not disturb sign. And it's like mentally inside, I've placed that in there. I do not anyone to disturb or try to change around anything that I have placed in there about what is possible for me. So you never want to place into your imagination any thought that you would not want to materialize. You never want to allow in your imagination to be contaminated by the way life used to be. Your imagination is yours. Don't let any other people influence you. Never allow people's ideas about what is possible or impossible for you to occupy your imagination. I've called it, throughout my life, I've called it being a scurvy elephant. When I was in the third grade, I was living in a foster home out in Mount Clemens, Michigan, and I came home from school, and I talked to Mrs. Scarf, and I said, Mrs. Scarf, what's a scurvy elephant? And she said, where did you hear that? And I said, I don't know, Mrs. Poole, my third grade teacher, was talking to the principal, Mrs. Smith, and she said Wayne Dyer was in his classroom and called me a scurvy elephant. <laughs> so she got on the phone and she called up and the principal said, oh, that's Wayne. He gets everything mixed up. She didn't say that he was a scurvy elephant in her classroom. She said that he was a disturbing element <laughs> in her classroom. <laughs> a disturbing element is someone who has in their imagination the possibility that they can do anything, that all things are possible. Again, it's one of those great lines from the New Testament. With God, 
All things are possible. Now you tell me, what does that leave out? What does all things are possible leave out? That doesn't leave out the possibility that we can defy gravity, that we can soar, that we can heal ourselves, that we can create magnificent prosperity in our life, that we can change the world. I said at one of the breaks here to the audience here tonight, I really believe that if this message gets out there into the world, we can shift the consciousness of this planet. If enough of us begin to believe, we're placing into our imagination a world that we want to live in that has no limitations and that is based on living from a place of love and kindness and God consciousness and spiritual awareness, divine mind at work. I believe it's possible. Thank you. But we have to do it with our imagination. It has to begin with our imagination. Collectively, if enough of us begin to believe that we can create that kind of a world, if public television can put on these kinds of programs, which is why I am a part of public television, because this is what they broadcast. This is what comes into our homes. The energy of all things are possible, not the energy of violence and hatred and, you know, and all of the silly stuff that you see so frequently on commercial and cable television, especially the violence and especially the rude communication between young children and their parents and so on. You don't see that here. It's why I'm here raising money for this station and all public television stations. <laughs> Einstein, once again, this man of imagination said, logic will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. That's the first of these wishes fulfilled foundations. The second, foundation is very significant and very important. I call it living from the end. This is one of the harder ones for people to get, but I'd like you to go again to the New Testament. Look at Romans 4:17. In the presence of him whom he believed God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Those are very important, significant words. You have to be able to call the things which you have not seen yet materialize and manifest into your physical world. You have to be able to say to yourself, I call those things that I would like to become as if they already do. And you place into your imagination fearlessly the I am's which you would like to create for yourself. And when it's time for me to write another book, I don't even know what it's going to be. I just know that it starts germinating inside me. And it's like a calling, it's like a passion. And I'm over there at my writing space. And before I do, I come up with the title. And before I even write one word, I did it with this book, Wishes Fulfilled. This, I take a jacket, which is, this isn't even my book. <laughs> and I take this jacket and I ask the art department at Hay House if they will please design a book with this title. And I put it around another book, which I have done, and I set it on my writing space next to Ralph Waldo Emerson and Jesus Christ picture and Paramahansa Yogananda and my children and the people that I love deeply and profoundly in my life. And I look at it with three white candles that I light every single time I sit over there. And I look at that jacket. And I, it's as if I call those things, the book does not exist. I call it as if it did. When my leukemia diagnosis came in, <clears throat> the information that was sent to me continuously was uh, it's incurable. This is something that you can't change. And I would say to my children who would send me this, I would say, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't send me that kind of stuff. <laughs> and they'd say, what do you mean? Why, do you, why, Dad? Why wouldn't you want us to send that? It says that right in there. I said, what part of I am well is it that you don't understand? <laughs> because I have placed that into my imagination. I have a wonderful quote by the man I've cited before. His name is Neville, and it goes like this. He says, disregard appearances, conditions, 
In fact, disregard all evidence of your senses, that is what your eyes and ears tell you, that deny the fulfillment of your desire, whatever it is you want to attract into your life. Disregard appearances, conditions, in fact, all evidence of your senses that deny the fulfillment of your desire. Rest in the assumption that you already are what you want to be. For in that determined assumption, you and your infinite being, your extraordinary self, which is what this program is about, are merged in creative unity and with your infinite being, God, all things are possible. God never fails. And you are a piece of that which never fails. And you are going to move beyond just being a piece and just being a fragment and just being a segment until it becomes your overwhelming knowing that you have within you this divine capacity. You don't need evidence of your senses. I wrote a book a few years back. The title of it, I had to get my publisher because they didn't understand it. They called back, they said, I think you got this wrong. I said, no, it's called, you'll see it when you believe it. Not the other way around. People will say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. It doesn't work that way. You'll see it when inside you have a knowing. And Neville also said, therefore, to incarnate a new and a greater value of yourself, you must assume that you already are what you want to be, and then live by faith in this assumption. Now this flies in the face of so much of what you've been told, because you have a tendency to believe that what your eyes and ears tell you is reality. But this is what we know by our senses. Just this little tiny fragment. I can't even get, you know, it's like a, a millionth of a millimeter. And all that is unknown is in the invisible, in the imagination. And most of our attention is focused on, this is my beliefs and my disbeliefs about what is possible and what isn't possible are here. And it's an endless, an endless universe. So placing I am's into your imagination is one thing, it's an intellectual act. Living from the end means that you call the things which do not exist as if they did. You begin to say to yourself, you don't have to say it to anyone else, you don't have to write it down, you don't have to get anybody else's approval, you don't have to look on the internet, you don't have to do anything like that.